room, you're watching TV. It says, honey, I need you to fill in the blank. Could you please remember, please remember, fill in the blank. Yeah, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. <laughs> then what happens? Rerun of your favorite show ever comes on. <laughs> Where'd it go? I don't know. What? What? Did you take care of the thing like I said? Um, I had gas. It was very uncomfortable. I don't, I don't remember. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I was, I was, and then, and then, oh, and then Fresh Prince came on and it was like the song and I just got into the song, you know, West Philadelphia, born and raised, you know, I can't, I just gone. I don't, I swear, I don't know what happened. I meant to do it. And it's just gone. Welcome to Jesus's world. <laughs> Telling these guys the most important thing they will ever, ever hear. Over and over and over again. They can't, they can't hold on to it. And he says, but the, even though I'm gone, even though I'm gone, the counselor will come. Why? Because he needs to. <laughs> because he needs to. Because if the counselor doesn't come, you and I don't stand a chance. We can't follow Jesus for like more than 10 minutes. If we don't have him constantly with us, in us, to remind us, to help us to understand things. I used to say, or actually I used to hear somebody say this. They'd say this all the time. I think they said it wrong, but they said it and I remembered it. They said, I forgot more than I ever knew. He's always saying, I forgot more than I ever knew, this friend of mine. I'm like, what does that even mean? I think it's supposed to be, I forgot more than you ever knew. You know, it's supposed to be like an insult or something. But he'd just walk around and go, I forgot more than I ever knew. <laughs> Felt right to him. <laughs> Maybe it does to you too. I mean... Jesus' commands are fairly simple, but we just have the most amazing ability to just kind of lose it when we get into life. Oh, somebody's yelling at us. What am I going to do? Punch him in the face. What else am I going to do? Yes. Somebody says something bad about me. What am I going to do? I'm going to say something bad right back. Somebody stole something from me. I'm going to take it back and take something of theirs. You know, we just we have this fleshly existence that we're born into. Everything feels so natural, except for what Jesus came and commanded. Without my help, Jesus says, you need help. <laughs> you don't understand. I didn't come to just tell you what to do and then go. Then come back later. It's different than that. It's different. And, and he's, oh. if you read in John where he is, John 14, okay, you'll see that he says all these things, and he kind of winds down and takes a break. It's like, that's it, that's enough, let's, let's get on, let's go out of here, let's go for a walk, let's go on to the next thing. And then the next thing John writes down is the story, this is beautiful metaphors, famous now. I mean, we, we've all, you know, many of us have heard this, the vine and the branches thing. It tells this beautiful story, and what people don't realize, it's, it's an explanation for just how much you actually need God, Jesus, to be present, not just around, not just a long time ago, but with you. With you. A present tense, current Jesus. With you. A counselor, a coach, a helper, motivator. I could have given him ten more names. I'll stick with the ones that Jesus gave him. He says this, I am the vine, John 15. I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. He's the vine dresser. The vine dresser is the guy that goes around in the, in the, in the, in the grape, you know, the, the orchard. I can't even remember. What, I, what is it? Vineyard. vineyard, thank you. The vineyard. Uh, I needed the Holy Spirit in somebody to tell me that because I forgot. 
That's how bad it is, okay? I've read this about 50 million times. What is it? It's a vineyard. Okay, come on, James. So the vine dresser, what's his job? Every year at the beginning of the season or the end of the season, he goes through and he looks to see which are the branches on the vines that are going to be good to produce in the future. And you know how he makes that determination? He looks for growth. Is it growing or is it dying? If it's dying, if it's dead, if it's, if it's ceased to produce a yield, you know, you, you, you clip it off. You clip it off. What's the point? It's just it's a dead stick in the way. You remove it. I did this myself. I was a, I was a farmer. I was a fruit farmer. I had, I had different kinds of fruit. I had blueberry bushes and I had raspberry canes. And I would come through in the spring. I would do very much the same thing. I'd look for the good ones. And I'd go, oh, that thing looks to be about over with. So get it out of there. He says, he says, I'm the vine, my father's the vine dresser. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You, he says this, listen to this. He says, you are already clean. Already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. You guys are right with the, God, the, the father. You're right. You're okay. You believe. You're, you have faith. You're here. Because why? Because I've been here with you, speaking to you, and telling you things, and coaching you, and, and, and catching you. I've been here. That's why you're okay. But then he says this. He says, remain in me. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Remain. Stay with me here. You've, you've been with me. I've been with you, physically been with you. But I'm going to go now. But listen, guys, listen. Maybe the most important thing I tell you, you got to stay with me. You got to stay. You got to keep up. You got to stay. Hey, 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 stay, stay with me. Every time I talk about this, I picture that, that thing that they used to do in the 90s uh, and, and TV shows that were funny. You know, they'd have the little dream sequence. Somebody would be doing their business and sitting in class or something, and all of a sudden, you know, they go off to La La Land, right? And they think about some memory or some fantasy or some stupid thing, right? And, and then, you know, a minute or two would go by, and then you'd hear, hey, hey, Bill, Bill, hey. And, and you know, you'd see him kind of like, oh, 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 yeah, I'm sitting in the middle of, you know, Thailand uh, on an expressway or something. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be hit by a train. Whoa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it seems silly. The problem is we're silly. <laughs> That's us. And Jesus is saying, guys, you're, listen, you are on the correct path that you need to be on. But you got to stay with me. Why? If he says no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. The vine's where the life is. The vine's where the juice is. You must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, you may have all the greatest intentions of the world of starting out following Jesus, and uh, you know you, you've read the book, and you've you've studied the manual, and you've and you've had some great experiences and all that good stuff. He said, guys, if you don't stay with me, with me, you don't stand a chance. You don't stand a chance. You'll get to the end of your life and you'll have not much to show. <laughs> okay, your life will you wither. You'll wither. You, oh, you may think you can do it for a while. You may try awful hard. But you'll, you'll lose your focus. You'll lose your resolve. You, you won't have the encouragement you need. You'll fall into depression and stay there. You'll give up when the hard things happen and keep happening. You, you won't make it through to the end with faith. 
See, faith, faith can't be about a memory. That's good. It can't be about a memory. Faith can't be about an experience you once had. You can't have faith in a memory. You can't have faith in, a, in an experience. Jesus asks us to have faith in Him presently. A present Jesus. A Jesus who actually is walking with you right now. A Jesus who didn't just leave us with some instructions and then say, you know what, I'll come back maybe sometime later, far down the road, and we'll just see what you came up with. No. He knows us better than that. He knows us better than that. You need, you need a, a present, a real Jesus to be a Christian. You need, you need a Jesus that actually is helping you and a Jesus that you are looking to right now for help, looking to right now for direction, looking to right now for what you need, for what you don't know yet. To really get anywhere. That's Jesus's. That's Jesus' guidance right there. Apart from me, you can't do much of anything. You've got to stay connected. And I'm the vine. I'm the vine. You get disconnected, you're going to wither. You're just going to wither. I'm talking to everybody right now. Even the unhappy person in this room. <laughs> There's so much emphasis on having an experience with God. And I'm telling you, an experience with God is a wonderful thing. But an experience with God is only meaningful if it triggers a relationship. I have so many memories of people in my past. Some of those memories, I'm telling you, they were fun memories. I was having fun when I had them. But many of those relationships, they don't even exist anymore. They don't. And you know what? Memory doesn't do me any good. I think about it. I go back. Wasn't that? Oh, I remember I did that. And then, oh yeah, we don't talk anymore. You know, I had a friend in college. I have more than one friend. But I had this one friend I was really good friends with. We, we were tight. We were definitely tight. You know, and we'd go out to eat someplace. And, we, you know, we didn't even keep track of who paid the bill anymore. You know, we'd buy groceries for the town townhouse we stayed in. And, uh, you know, we weren't too exact about who how paid how much. We didn't care. It was just kind of like that. If somebody invited one of us to go somewhere, you know, it was just obvious we were both coming. People just knew that because we were like this. That was 15 years ago. 15 years ago. I haven't talked to him in 15 years. I used to just, you know, if I was coming through Rochester, I'd stay at his house. You know, hey, I come stay at my house. Nobody cares, you know. I wouldn't do that anymore. Why? There's no relationship. It didn't stay. It didn't remain. It ended. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And you, oh, this is for so many of us. Okay? I'll tell you something about grapevines, branches and fruit and things. A branch doesn't die overnight. It doesn't. I mean, maybe somebody comes along and just rips it off. I guess it does, but the branch doesn't die overnight. It may get 
hugged at or damaged a little bit or insects get into it a little bit or something chews on it or, you know, wind breaks a little bit. It doesn't break right off, but it'll sit there and just be kind of like a little bit healthy or it'll be a little less healthy than it used to be. And it'll get a little less healthy than that and a little less healthy than that. It's a very, very slow process. My grandma used to have an apple tree in the front yard. And I remember the day, I was very small, I remember the day we cut it down. And I said, why would we cut down the apple tree? How come it doesn't give, how come we just don't keep it and get the apples? I mean, like six. I mean, what, I'm just asking. She said, well, it hasn't really, it hasn't really made any apples in quite a long time. I said, what happened? <laughs> she said, well, nothing really happened. Just over time, nothing happened. It was just a slow fade, subtle less and less every year until one day we just said, why do we even, why do we have that? It doesn't yield any fruit. Let's see.